right, uh, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. And uh, I think it's uh, uh, honoured yeah, to make some comments and to make uh, my readings of uh, Sunar's uh, uh, masterpieces, lah, I would say. Yeah? Uh, I think, uh, foremost, our night, I just want to congratulate him for this uh, beautiful collection. Uh, I'm impressed of uh, many pieces. Yeah. Uh, one thing which I noted yeah, um, very much coming out is basically about the theme of reconstruction. Yeah. Why do I say reconstruction? I mean, historically, yeah, Prambanan, which he depicted yeah, in his uh, painting, in this collection, is actually a reconstructed site. That sense, it was uh, built during you know, the classical period in Javanese history. The colonial uh, explorer yeah, found, uh, discovered it, and reconstructed it, right? And during uh, many uh, turbulent period in Indonesian history, there are places that are neglected, including also uh, earthquakes. And so time to time, this complex of Prambanan uh, were and are reconstructed. So that's, that's I think, historically, that's, that's the element of reconstruction. But most importantly, I think the reconstruction of uh, the identity of the artist. If you, I mean, all artists want to claim certain marking of a certain roots that he or she belongs. So if we, if my reading of this Sunar's work, I would say that it is also uh, that part of uh, the bigger schema of reconstruction. Yeah. Uh, by that I mean, uh, if we look at, um, you know, I mean, he being uh, born in Singapore, yeah, of um, uh, by ethnicity Malay with uh, Javanese ancestry, yeah, an artist who wants to reconstruct his identity, right? So that reconstruction demands him to uh, look for yeah, uh, certain cultural icons. Yeah? Some might have chosen Borobudu. Some might have chosen um, you know, more popular uh, Javanese um, yeah, cultural symbols like say Bate, right? Wayang Kulit, Kuda Kepang and many more. Uh, Sunar chose Prambanan. Yeah, there must be a reason. Yeah, and um, I think uh, the the um, the long history of Prambanan, which is subjected to reconstruction, parallels with Sunar's attempt at reconstruction his identity. So there is a correlation there. Right? Here, Prambanan as a complex of reconstruction. Here, the artist is reconstructing his identity. So I think the team of reconstruction itself is beautifully played. Um, I, I got his info, I mean, I mean, during the opening, he said that, you know, when he was young, he visited this place, he had fond memories, uh, he, his father brought him uh, to Prambanan. Yeah. So, as an artist today that he did, um, let's say, you know, a few years ago, before this thing being um, launched, uh, he was, of course, recollecting his memory. That process of recollection is reconstruction. He reconstruct his memory. Right? And a certain angle, a certain colouring, certain features, you know, all his crafts, right? He managed to assemble it, assemble it, and then here we have it. Now, if let's say I look at this Prambanan Temple 1, yeah, and then Prambanan Temple Roro Jongre, right? Uh, okay, let's put it this way. Why then Sunar choose Prambanan? Yeah? Uh, there are in, say, cultural manifestation, those that belong to, say, uh, what I call it, uh, aristocratic, regal, right? Uh, you know, complexes like this for sure, it's of high culture as compared to those popular ones belonging, if we can say, 
popular ones. Yeah, I don't I don't like this word low culture, but the popular one. Right. So uh, Sunar chose this one because this one relates to the team that he has chosen, Empress. Right. And I think there's two components to this: Empress and uh, Cradle. Right. right? Um, all right. So let's go by. Uh, layers of layers, yeah, of, of my reading to this. Um, let's look at Prambanan Temple 1. If we look at Prambanan Temple 1, uh, we see uh, uh, two blocks of painting, yeah, stacked to each other. Just like, you know, Sunar explained, this is how the temple's been built, stack of uh, blocks of uh, stones. And also, there are human beings moving around with some colors. That in itself is his reconstruction to make it more, I think, uh, humane, if I were to say, more, yeah, more ordinary, right? Prambanan, which is accessible to all, right? Prambanan, which can means to everyone, right? But the one, the big masterpiece here, Roro Jongrang, you know, this is certainly you know, a, a different order. This is certainly uh, stately, royal, aristocratic. Right? And it, it, it translates into uh, not just the quality, but also you know, uh, the kind of price range that this should fetch. Yeah? So, uh, again, uh, why he chose... Uh, that that uh, cultural sites or cultural products that belongs to uh, a certain um, what do you call it yeah a high civilization is very interesting yeah interestingly too uh, coming from a person where we can say a Javanese diaspora in that sense right uh, in the sense that you know um, I mean. I mean, by, by, by ethnicity, you know, culturally, he's a, a Malay person, live in Singapore, proud of his Javanese roots. But the one that he associates with is actually of this um, uh, historical site. And this is majestic building. These are temple sites of uh, the three great pantheon of, uh, in Hinduism, right? Uh, the three mukti. Okay. Um, and then I, what I, I realized is that the, uh, uh, again, uh, coming back to uh, the attempt of the um, artist, reconstruction now becomes uh, the vitality. Yeah? The There's another one which is very interesting. Yeah, uh, look at the first. If you enter the gallery, the first one. Yeah, yeah. This is the one with uh, the hanging ion, ionan, right? Which means also cradle, right? And it uh, relates to the theme of Empress of Cradle. Right? Uh, it is red in color, right? It. Um, this is this like a you know, carved stone hanging with a, a thread, yeah, and then there is also an imprint of some red ink, yeah, against the black Chinese ink. Uh, my reading is that is actually the force of life. It vibrates. It's a symbol of uh, what they call it um, um, human force, right? Or if you want to say mother. If empress means mothers that give life, mothers that give birth, mothers that um, give, uh, in the sense that uh, the birth of civilization, right? Then it relates, it, it well relates to uh, his attempt of reconstructing. Bear in mind, most and almost all, apart from grey that I can see, or brown, right? It's all black Chinese ink. Right? That in itself, if uh, mis being misread, it could be something of dull, right? No life, yeah. Um, in fact, gloomy. But when he played with the first take, 
You know, the moment you enter the gallery, you find this, look, you are assured that it is not about necro, not about that, but about bio, biophilia, yeah? the love of life. Yeah? So that's why the Empress of Cradle. Yeah? And maybe if I may add, and this is interesting during the opening, if I can recollect it very well, Sunar mentioned about um, his father. Yeah? A father figure that I think he admired, that thing that he uh, that brought him yeah, uh, to Prambanan itself. Yeah? But I have not heard, based on the conversation, or maybe I did not hear, uh, anywhere making reference to the mother. Right? Maybe I missed it. But nevertheless, what is interesting, if the father figure becomes what that he can recollect, which is a work of reconstruction, but at another level, the choice of a subject, the choice of a title for this collection is Empress of Cradle. That itself must be reference to mother. Yeah? And, uh, you know, Prambanan is always linked with this myth, the Javanese myth of the Roro Jongren, yeah? the, the princess supposedly, yeah? that being cursed and then you know, um, part of it, you know, you know, embodied in one of the structures and so on and so forth. You know, it's about women too. Alright? I'm not going to depth myth, but what is interesting of how artists able to play with contrast, able to play with his own attempt at reconstruction. His attempt is to make meaning. Yeah? Um, I think artists like him, right, uh, persistently, you know, wanting to be creative and produce new things, presenting to the public, presenting to his audience. Um, there must be some strategic choice here, right? And I think uh, his choice is of, of Prambanan is app. Um, I mean for lack of my exposure, I have not sent this collection, right? Uh, I have came across many on Borobodo, but not of Prambana. Maybe I, I miss, yeah? Um, yeah, and then the take on, um, um, you know, apart from his skill, his craft, yeah? Uh, you know, using Chinese ink, you know, is a uh, hardest, harder, you know, technique that, you know, he needs to play around. Yeah? Uh, I think um, he did well in that sense. Yeah? But I think my last take on, 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 on this project, um, as an artist, he wants to tell uh, what sort of artist he is. I think not simply identity, because identity is quite simple to read, I think. Right? But uh, um, um, an artist is always a cultural broker. A cultural broker that wants to transmit something. Yeah. And this is where I think um, he, he wants to tell us, look, look at all these heritage sites. These are all our pride in civilization. But this thing is not dead. This thing is alive. Right? So don't treat this as historical. Treat this as something which uh, lives with you. And, and I think it comes back to the first point that I made. It's all about reconstruction, right? As an artist, I think this is the, you know, part, maybe the artist may not be conscious, yeah? uh, but the act of giving birth to new ideas, new act, yeah, a new vision, the artist is transmitting, the artist is uh, reconstructing. Yeah? And I think Sunar has done his part in it, right? Um, the first time I entered this gallery, uh, when I saw Prambanan, I my first bias was, oh, don't tell me another historical, right? And then, as I move along, I say, hey, hey, it's not historical, it's not identity, right? It is 
a reconstruction of what is meaningful to us. Yeah. From Banan, he has chosen yeah, uh, as a medium to express uh, that ethos you know, that all of us are subjected to reconstruction. I guess that's my reading. Simple podcast.